Curtis Sullivan. He's the owner and operator of Vault of Midnight. Great to have you with us, Curtis. Hey, thanks for having me, you guys. How are things going in the comic book industry right now? Sales up, down, or pretty much where they used to be? Um, well, for us, we you know had a challenging year in 2020. I will say uh, we have three locations in Michigan, and uh, we experienced our first ever uh, down year in the history of our company. We're our 25th anniversary is this year in July, and so uh, yeah, it was a really, really tough year for us. How has it been 25 years? Uh, yeah, I, good question. Yeah, I ask myself that all the time. Yeah, we opened in July of '96, and we're somehow still kicking. And um, you know, as tough as the year was, we were able to make it through without um, letting in the single employee go. Even with being closed down for a few months, we were able to um, keep everybody on payroll and uh, keep everyone paid and uh, uh, keep you know benefits alive even through the shutdown. So I mean, it was an extremely tough year financially for us, but. Um, you know, the positive note is we made it through. We're on the other side. And, uh, yeah, we, we were able to retain our, our crew of really exceptional people. So yeah. um, that means a lot. That is awesome because I will say when it comes to comic books, you really need to know the comic book industry because there are so many different storylines and people are very specific about what they want. For sure. Yeah, we really pride ourselves on that, too. You know, um, you know, we want to help folks who know a lot about comics, but then every day we get uh, curious people who don't know much at all. You know, maybe they've seen movies or shows. And so we really want to be able to guide guide new folks in, too. So, uh, yeah, having that knowledge base is critical, yeah, to what we do as a retailer. So, so with that, Curtis, too, how much does the movie industry impact uh, your sales there directly? Because we've seen some of these big blockbusters be put on hold this year. Sure. Yeah, it, it definitely has an impact. Um, some more than others, obviously. But uh, yeah, a big successful comic book movie just gets everybody excited and uh, gets them coming through the door. So yeah, we, we've absolutely noticed uh, big events uh, in the comic book industry kind of pivot around some key movie releases every year. And, and obviously all of those were canceled in 2020. So uh, like free comic book day being like kind of the big one, the most notable one. Uh, Marvel always releases a movie, a big movie, the weekend of free comic book day. So um, for sure, yeah, that that has changed uh, our business um, big, big time. Having said that, um, big releases on Netflix that are comic book based have still been really key and drove people through the door, too, in a, in a, in a different way. So, yeah. So that's been there. Yeah. Netflix um, and some of the other streaming services, that really kind of, I think, is going to be the future. But they've had so many of these um, comic book related um, storylines that have been put out there. So is when that happens and it starts to become popular because we've all been binging Netflix during this time, does it drive people to come into the story to get the graphic novels or even to try to learn more about the back history of some of these stories? Oh yeah, yeah, recent examples of that are The Mandalorian has just been like unbelievably huge on Disney Plus, right? And that the Star Wars fever is at like an all time high. Like, you know, it, it ebbs and flows with Star Wars as there's there's content, you know, released movies and whatnot. But uh, yeah, The Mandalorian has uh, sent Star Wars stratospheric for us in comic books, graphic novels, board games, uh, related Star Wars stuff. So that, that's been giant. And then um, WandaVision is the new one uh, that people are really uh, loving and coming in the store to check out more find out more about those characters I'm, i will say going back to star wars i'm like how many more times can they remake that movie right yeah yeah no mandalorian's been a blast i mean i gotta say as a lifelong star wars fan you know i'm pretty old so uh i've been around for the whole all of it and uh i'm as excited as i've ever been you know uh for star wars with the stuff they've been doing recently so yeah Good question. I don't know. Forever, probably. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it brings yeah. generations together, right? Because you brought the you probably started when you were a kid, and now, like you know, you can bring your your kids into the genre as well and share that backstory to then get them hooked on the earlier versions as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think generational fandom is so cool. It's one of the you know one of our joys as being a retailer when we see that in the store. You know, families coming in together and. Uh, yeah, enjoying these things together. Like that's super, super cool. Yeah. 
Curtis Sullivan with us here on the Megacast. He's the owner and operator of Vault of Midnight. Uh, with that, you guys um, also have your 28 Days of Black comics. Tell us about that. Yeah, so that is a big promotion we're doing. every. So every February, we celebrate Black History Month at our stores. Uh, we do a big display in the store. We feature Black creators, uh, Black characters, and really just kind of highlight um, uh, those stories, those comics in our shops. And this year, um, an awesome some talented individual at our Detroit location cooked up this this big promotion, the 28 uh, Days of Black Comics promotion, which we're doing on our web store. We're doing it in store. We're offering discounts on a featured book every single day. So 28 different selections for the whole month. Um, yeah, we're going to, uh, yeah, just uh, celebrate it. We, we do it every year, but this we're going even bigger and uh, bolder this year. Uh, and the list of stuff is, uh, the list of books is absolutely incredible. So um, yeah, stop by your local Vault of Midnight or go to Vault of Midnight shop to check out uh, the full list of titles being featured. Uh, yeah, super exciting, awesome stuff. I think it's great that you're doing that. Uh, last week we had um, Kenneth Quattro with us. Uh, he wrote uh, The Invisible uh, Men, uh, which was highlighting some of oh, the, yeah. the Black comic book artists through, through the years. And it's so important to keep these stories alive and uh, talk about uh you know what some of these um you know different artists go through and how they've been able to help shape some of these stories exactly and been re really instrumental in uh really key voices in the comic book uh business for you know decades yeah absolutely so for those that have maybe never been in your store um what will they find if they walk in what sets you apart from some of the other comic book stores yeah, I think first and foremost, it's the folks that work in the store. So if you walk into a Vault of Midnight, you're going to be greeted by somebody who's really enthusiastic and excited to see you and, and knows a lot about comics and is passionate about, um, you know, comics and graphic novels and board games and stuff. So that I think that's the number one thing for us. But, um, you know, probably uh, close behind is um, selection and the style of the stores. You know, we, we try to offer clean, organized spots where we really showcase all this cool stuff that we sell so we should have what you're looking for in the store and it and, and hopefully it'll be presented in like a really exciting kind of visually appealing way as well so yeah what are your locations i've been to the downtown a detroit store but what are your other locations yeah so we are, are we were founded in 1996 in ann arbor michigan and we are that's our uh first location it's on main street ann arbor and then we have a location that uh, will be eight years old this year that is in Grand Rapids, right downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, on Monroe Center, right next to the uh, art museum right downtown. So uh, Curtis, we've seen so many bookstores, just regular bookstores close over the past decade. Uh, does that impact uh, your business at all because you are still open? Um, you know, not directly, but that's sort of our model. Um, we model ourselves more like a local bookstore than I guess maybe a traditional comic book store. Like we, we feature a lot of new product. We do have vintage comics and that kind of stuff, but we, um, you know, we want to be a community hub. We want to um, have perennial items that, that reach a really broad audience age wise, demographically speaking. So we do our, we're really looking to the local bookstore as kind of like our template for what we try to do. So we don't see a direct kind of, uptick in business i guess because uh, maybe another bookstore maybe shut down because we we do offer different stuff but um yeah we we hope we want more bookstores to be around i think that's complimentary and and uh benefits us uh as well so yeah i wasn't aware of that i um that uh smaller bookstores have been shutting down so that's a shame to hear we need we need them most definitely and with that because we've seen uh, so many books are going online and digital is that happening in your industry at all? I mean, it is, but but the so when digital comics came out, you know, probably a decade ago, they were really on this uh, very skyward trajectory, and that's really leveled off. So the growth of print comic books and graphic novels and digital are, are pretty neck and neck. So um, print and digital are kind of growing at the same time. So no, they I think they help more than they hurt. And I think they'll always, I mean, I hope, we'll see. I hope there'll always be a place for physical places to buy books and physical books, whether it's, you know, prose or, or comics and graphic novels. So not so far. I mean, it's something we always keep our eyes on, obviously, because, you know, in a world increasingly moving to delivery and digital, um, 
you know, obviously that's, that's a risk, but like I said, so far we've never had a down year as a company, you know, in 25 years, except for 2020. That was the, that's the only year we haven't seen year on year growth. So, um, we hope that's anomalous and, and COVID related more than anything else. Right. Exactly. And the fact that you were able to keep your employees on staff is is amazing. And it says a lot about uh, you and your team as well to be able to do so Uh, with the the collectible world. um, Is that up or down right now? Because comics are a commodity. I mean, they can be an investment. Sure. Yeah. um, Yeah, I think, um, you know, we've had some encouraging news you know our our holiday season was better than we hoped and and by that i mean not as bad as we predicted so that was positive january was 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 flat that's incredible uh that's actually a good news um so yeah i think stuff's holding tough um we are limited to how many folks we can have in the store we are really really strict with the safety um precautions right we have a, a max amount of folks we let in the store at any one time so that that has had a negative impact right normally we'll have you know a full store of folks and now we you know in our detroit location we can only have eight people in the store at a time so that has impacted um sales but um board games for us if i if i had to pick one thing long story long if i had to pick one thing that's really really kind of shining and has continued to outperform uh is board games so uh that's a big part of what we do it's like a third of what we do and uh, they continue to kick butt so Huh. Well, and people are having more game nights, right? They sure are. Yeah. Folks are, you know, in their, in their COVID bubble bubble and, you know, they're looking for stuff to do. They've watched all the shows, you know? Um, yeah. Board games have been on a real tear for probably more than a decade. And uh, COVID I think is really, at least for us and our business has accelerated um, people's interest in, in yeah, sitting around the table and interfacing in a different way in a, in a, I don't want to say old fashioned way, but you know, almost, you know, yeah. It really is. I was going to say, I feel like old school, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's what we used to do. Uh, you know, that's what we grew up on, right? Board games. Yeah. Stuff made out of cardboards, no electronics, no batteries, no internet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With that, Curtis Sullivan with us here on the MegaCast. He's the owner and operator for Vault of Midnight. Uh, you guys are celebrating your 25 years in business and operation. Uh, with I have to tell you, you know, my husband is a comic book collector and it drives me crazy. <laughs> it's the best. Encourage him. Love, love him and love his hobby. It's, it's, the, it's, it's such an amazing hobby. I've been doing it since I was a very tiny child and I, uh, I, I just uh, love it to death. I love reading comics, but I, I also love collecting them and, and, and organizing them and uh, keep them in good shape and because um, they're really memories. And that's the thing that like, I think anybody who collects anything really, I mean, you love the thing, you love the object, but you remember where you got it. You remember when you got it. Um, if it was a special event with, with other friends, like we'll go to comic conventions and buy books. So it's just memories, you know? So I, I just, uh, I encourage people to read comics, but also collect comics, you know? Um, so yeah, it's a great but, thing. But see, here's the different Curtis. You yeah. have a store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are taking over our house. <laughs> well, uh, if he needs help organizing, we're here for for him and you. We sell organizing supplies. Um, you know, yeah, you want to keep your collection nice and crispy and uh, and don't let it take over your whole house. Have a designated comic area. Oh, my advice. yes. I told him he, he's growing out of one of the bedrooms. I'm like, no, like I'll walk yeah, yeah. into a room. I'm like, okay, this is your area. And I'll walk in and he'll have like in the bathroom, he'll switch out my cute print and put up a comic something. I'm like, no, that goes in the bedroom. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, yeah, you'll hear no uh, support from me. I say, yeah, put, hang <laughs> more comic book art. That, that's, uh, you know, yeah, I endorse yeah. that. Yeah, original artwork is really hard to get right now. Oh, it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's just truly the the coolest thing. I mean, it's one of a kind. I only have one piece of original art in my whole collection, but it's totally cherished. It's from one of my favorite artists and a very influential comic for me personally. So, oh my gosh, I love it. It's, yeah, it's like having an original painting. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. And you just think back to the day where they probably threw out uh, so much because it wasn't considered valuable or they were, you know, paper was being recycled back during the war. And oh, it's like, wow, to have all that. And it's, it's history, like you said, but 
Curtis, it's been ha a sure. great having you. Again, uh, what are your hours too? Do you guys have reduced hours? Uh, do you want to share any of that information? Oh yeah, that'd be great. So yeah, folks can interact with us. All of our stores are open, um, but we do have reduced hours. We're 11 to eight every day, which I know doesn't sound that reduced. We were previously 10 to 10. So we're just always open, but we're open seven days a week. Uh, we offer at risk hours on Thursdays from 11 to one for at risk guests uh, every Thursday at every vault of midnight. And um, you can also interact with us uh, uh, through our web store, vaultsofmidnight.shop. We offer curbside pickup. We offer mail order. Uh, so, yeah. And, you know, you can call us or email us, too, at any one of our shops and just, uh, yeah, ask us for recommendations. We're happy to, uh, yeah, pick something out for you, uh, mail it to you, get it all set up so you can just pull up and, and pick it up uh, contact free. So, yeah. I will say it's almost Valentine's Day. You know, for the comic book lover in your life, you can always yeah. uh, get them a gift from your store, right? Yeah, and we do, like I said, we do board games and Dungeons and Dragons and dice and, and uh, cute plushies, you know. So, you know, we, uh, you know, little figurines. Uh, so, yeah, there's, yeah, we think, we like to think we have something for everybody, even if, even if they might not know it until they walk through the door. So, yeah, definitely come get your your valentine's gifts at vault of midnight for sure i will say um they know me well of the comic book store close to our house because i'm always like hey what does he want <laughs> and they yeah. tell me so it's great to to know your staff as well so curtis it's been great talking to you you too thank you very very much for taking the time to yeah let me get on and talk about comic books in vault of midnight Absolutely. And uh, again, um, we wish you the best of luck in 2021. And let's hope that we are on our way out of the pandemic and we can get back to life and as we used to know it and success for your business. For sure. Yeah, we're really excited. We're upbeat for 2021. We got some really big announcements coming in the next few months. So yeah, we're, we're excited. We're feeling upbeat about 2021. Well, good. And anytime you have anything you want to share, please, uh, you're always welcome back on the show. Dig it. Awesome. Thank you so much.